Hello everybody and welcome back to Unbound Learners Pre-K. My name is Nina. What's your name? It's nice to meet you. Let's get started with our good morning song together. We're going to stretch our arms out like airplane wings, fly to one side, over to the other side, fly back to the middle, big stretch out in front, and take the circle up over your head. We can stretch on this side, over to the other side. One last stretch, and now it's time to sing together. Good morning, dear earth. Good morning, dear sun. Good morning, dear rocks and flowers, everyone. Good morning, dear beast and birds in the trees. Good morning to you and good morning to me. Good morning, friends. Happy Monday. I hope that you all had a wonderful weekend. Before we get started on the calendar and weather chart, we have to do three things quickly. Number one, let's turn on our listening ears. Next, we have to put on our thinking hats. Today, my thinking hat has a zipper underneath my chin, so I'm going to zip it up. And the last thing that we need to do is warm up our hearts. Will you show me how to do that? That's right. Boom, 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 boom. And now it's time to move on to the calendar and weather chart. Friends, right up here, we have the month. Do you remember what the month is called? September, you're right. And today is September 13th. So I'm going to move the chip from the number 10. That was the last time that we met over to the number 11, 12, and I'm going to put it right on the number 13 because today is September 13th and the year is 2021, but you can also say 2021. I wonder how many days we've had so far in the month of September. Can you take your counting fingers out like this? and we'll warm them up to give them a little stretch. Let's count together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. We've had thirteen days so far in the month of September. Now let's hold up seven fingers like this to sing the Days of the Week song. And if you know the words, you can sing along with me. There are seven days, there are seven days, there are seven days in a week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Let's go down to the bottom of the chart and let's go over the Days of the Week together. Listen for the sound that the day starts with and if you know what the day is, you can say it with me. Yesterday was S Sunday, the last day of the weekend. That means that today is M Monday, the first day of the weekday. And tomorrow will be T Tuesday. Let's sing Today is Monday together. It goes like this. Today is Monday, today is Monday, today is Monday, all day long. Today is Monday, today is Monday, today is Monday, all day long. Up, 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 at the top of the chart, we have the season. What's the season, friends? Summer, that's right, it's still summertime for a little more than a week. And then we will say goodbye to the summertime and it will be fall. Let's go down to the bottom of the chart and sing the weather song together. Then we can talk about what we see outside of the window. What's the weather? What's the weather? Can you tell? Can you tell? Is the sun shining? Is the rain falling? 
Can you tell? Can you tell? So today where I live, it is a sunny day outside. I don't see very many clouds in the sky, just a clear blue sky, and my temperature chart is on orange because it's warm today. Warm and mostly sunny. What do you see outside of your window today? Thanks for sharing the weather with me. Now let's move on to the letter, the number, and the sign of the week. Today is Monday, so we have a new uppercase letter to learn. This capital letter makes two sounds. The first sound is like this, uh. Can you say that sound? Uh. And the second sound is a long sound that goes like this, you. Can you make the long sound for me? You. This is a capital U. U says uh and you. I wonder what we'll find inside of the letterbox today. I have a picture of something that makes the long sound U. Here's your first clue. This is something that you ride on. You pedal with it, so you use your two feet to push the pedals up and down. But this only has one wheel. What's that called? Let's open the box and find out. This is a picture of a unicycle. So right here is the seat. This is where you sit. The unicycle only has one wheel, so it takes a lot of balance. Unicycle starts with the letter U. This is how you write in uppercase, uh, U. One more time. Here is the number of the week. This double digit number is the number 16. When you write the number 16, you write two numbers. First you write the number one, and then you write the number six. One, six, 16. Let's count to the number 16 together using the large bead frame. Today we're going to count to the number 16 using the large bead frame. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 110, six units, 16. Inside of this box, I have some blades of grass to count. And as I count them, I'm going to line them up across the top so that we can see them together. Are you ready to count with me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we're halfway there. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and one more makes 16. 16 blades of grass. And now it's time to go over the sign of the week. Remember friends, Sign language is a language that uses hand gestures and facial expressions to communicate instead of speaking words out loud. Today and this week, we are going to practice saying outside in sign language. So you need to take one of your hands and you're going to spread your fingers apart. And as you put your fingers together, you're going to pull them away like this, outside. You can try outside. As summer comes to an end, that means that autumn is right around the corner. Instead of making flowers, plants are busy making seeds. During this time, 
seeds will begin to leave the plant, which is called dispersal. Here are a few ways that a seed is dispersed. The first example that I have right here is an anise hyssop plant. So these seeds are dispersed directly from the plant. In the early summertime, these cones on top are bright purple flowers. But now that summer is coming to an end, the seed pods are starting to dry out and turn brown. And if I shake them, little brown seeds will fall into my hand. So as the wind blows or if the plant is shaken by any reason, the seeds will fall out and fall around the ground and plant new ones for the following year. The next example that I have today is an acorn. So an acorn is a type of a seed that is sometimes planted by an animal. In the fall, squirrels and chipmunks and other small animals are busy hunting for acorn seeds and then they'll dig a hole and cover them up in order to have food in the winter time. But sometimes acorns will be forgotten and they'll be left covered up. If that happens, the acorn will grow into a new oak tree. Right here I have a small branch from a willow tree. A willow tree will grow seeds that are buoyant and that means that they can float in the water. So as the seeds are dispersed from the willow tree, if they land in the water, they can float and travel to a new location. And the last two examples that I have are seeds that travel by air or wind. So the first example that I have here is a cattail. Right now, this cone on the top is very hard and stiff, but in the winter time, it will dry up and it will have little light fluffy seeds on them that have little tails attached. When it's windy out, the little seeds will break off and the hairs will carry them throughout the air. A more common example is a dandelion. So when dandelions are flowers, they are bright yellow, but then as their season comes to an end, the petals will turn into these little seeds with the little hairs on it, almost like a puff ball. And I don't know if you've ever made a wish before on a dandelion, but when you blow the puffball, the little seeds will be carried in the air, similar to the seeds on a cattail. So dandelions and cattails are two examples of plants that disperse their seeds by the wind or air. Once the seed has reached its final destination, it will eventually land back on the ground and regrow into a new plant the following year. Today we're going to go on a scavenger hunt outside for seeds. Let's go. I just came back from my scavenger hunt outside and I found a bunch of different seeds that I'm really excited to explore using my magnifying glass. And after I finish exploring them and looking at them close up, I'm going to take out some colored pencils and sketch them. So let's start off with this really interesting seed right here. This is actually a seed pod. It's from a milkweed plant. So the pod right here is the protective shell. But if I open it up, I can see the seeds inside. This is what they look like. They're oval shape and they're brown. And there are these little silky hairs that are usually attached to the seed. And that means that they travel by wind. They're kind of small, so I'm going to look at them under the magnifying glass like this. You can see what it looks like close up. Let's move on to another seed that I found. This seed is from a nasturtium plant, 
which is a type of a flower. It's actually edible. Let's take a peek to see what it looks like under the magnifying glass. I can see that it's bumpy and it's light green. The next seed that I found in my garden was from an asparagus plant. So in the springtime, the asparagus popped out from under the ground and then throughout the summer, the stalks grew and you can no longer eat them. But towards the end of the summer, the stalks begin to grow these little red seeds on them and then they drop off and they reseed and plant themselves. It kind of reminds me of a berry. And I also found this. This is actually a weed that grows in my yard. But I can see these little pink and white flowers on top, which are actually seeds. So these seeds drop off from the plant itself and will also reseed. They look like little clumps of grapes almost. Small little grapes. But they're little pink seeds. So today I think that I am going to sketch these seeds that I found. I'm going to put my work tray to the side. And open up my pencil case where I have some colored pencils. I'm going to begin drawing the stem. So friends, after you have collected your seeds that you found on the scavenger hunt, you can take out a piece of paper and any drawing materials that you have, and you can begin to sketch your seed findings as well. There's the leaf coming off. There's some stems. And now I need pink. I'm just going to draw a bunch of little pink circles to represent the seeds that are on top of the stem. And there we go. I have a sketch of one of the favorite seeds that I found on my scavenger hunt. Let's get back to circle time. Welcome back to circle time, friends. I wonder if you'll be able to find any seeds today on your scavenger hunt that are dispersed by air or water. Thanks for learning with me today. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, give my video a thumbs up, and find me on OutSchool for my live and interactive classes. You can also support my channel by checking out my Patreon page and gain access to bonus features for your child. We have one more song to sing before we go. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. I'll see you next time. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you tomorrow.